Are you ready to be a plant parent? Well, you will be in about 10 minutes because our guest, Leslie Halleck, is the author of Plant Parenting. And welcome back to Central Texas Gardener. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here again. Plant propagation, a lot of people really, as they advance into, into gardening, they really get into this notion and this idea. Right. They want to pass along plants to their friends, etc. But people should understand the many different ways that plants propagate themselves first. We decided to call the book Plant Parenting because mm -hmm. I felt like this is an activity, you know, yeah. that people really want right. to get into. And I wanted to make the book really accessible to mm -hmm. total beginners and exactly. anybody who hasn't propagated before. And that's really what you're doing. You're making plant babies. But in order to make plant babies successfully, <laughs> you have to understand a little botany 101, how right. plants multiply. And it's so interesting. Someone actually said to me that they felt like the act of propagating propagating plants on their own felt a little artificial to them. And I had to remind them that plants are way smarter than us and they've figured out how to do all of this, all of this without us, you know, whether it's seeds. A million years ago. I, I know, seeds. And so I had to assure the new plant parent that no, 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 the way that you germinate these seeds and the way you take these cuttings, there are already ways that these plants multiply themselves. Sure. And every plant does it differently depending on, you know, where they right. evolved and where they're endemic to. Right. You have to learn how the plant you want to multiply mm -hmm is able to do that. You right. know, in some plants, you can take leaf cuttings and some plants you can't. Some mm -hmm. plants you can get seeds for, some plants you just can't right. get them because they're too hard to harvest. So a lot of people experience failure with first time propagating yeah. because they just didn't realize that the plant they wanna make more of doesn't propagate that way, doesn't right. multiply that way. So we do start out with some mm. basic 101 on how mm. plants multiply themselves so that you can take advantage of those tactics well, yourself. And it's very clear in the book. And then we're, I think you mentioned seeds. I want to start there because sure. when I think about plant propagation, you know, my earliest memory of plants is putting a little plant in a windowsill, right. you know, with my mom and we and cut off milk cartons, <laughs> right. you know, the whole thing. I know this book is more advanced than cut off milk cartons, but let's talk about well, techniques for seeds. Again, you have to go back to understanding the plant that mm -hmm. you want to grow from seed because every plant has different needs. Most tropical seeds, annuals, yeah. right, don't necessarily require a lot of preparation. You know, right. they need consistent moisture and they're going to need bright light after mm -hmm. they germinate. And, and a lot of times not enough light is where a lot of people fail with their seedlings. You know, windowsills are not great for most young seedlings, mm. your tomato transplants, right, for example. Right. Other seeds like wildflowers and sure. grasses and, and shrubs and trees may require special preparation, mm -hmm. um, pre-soaking, stratification, scarification. Right. And if you don't know that going in, that seed will rot before it roots. Exactly. So that's always the trick with propagation. It's a race to root before you rot, right? That's <laughs> I what like I always that. say. So, yeah, right. so can you know, with seeds, you want to create the conditions that are most conducive mm -hmm. to that seed germinating as quickly as possible, right? And putting down roots in a shoot so that it's successful before the elements yeah. come in to take it down. And the elements can be an over-attentive parent with Absolutely. too much water. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, overwatering is sort of the classic common yeah. yes. issue, whether you're maintaining houseplants or you're, you're taking care of seeds. And right. you, you literally suffocate your seedlings and plants with too much water. You, right. you, 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 you mm -hmm. drown the roots. So, yeah, too much water can cause all sorts of issues with seeds, fungal diseases, you name it. So mm -hmm. learning how to manage that is pretty important. The book is filled with lots of examples of how to deal with seeds and, you know, the, the proper care yes. and finding that balance, which is so important, you know, between just enough water and too much, right. et cetera. But you've covered the bases in a, in a way that really makes it accessible for people. Yes. So congrats for that Thank piece you. of it. <laughs> well, it's for everybody, so it, they can be successful. Exactly, right. 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 Now, speaking of water, another technique is, you know, and everybody knows this, there are a lot of plants you can simply snip yep. the end of a growing tip off, put it in water, and voila. Yeah, for, for a lot of new plant keepers, apartment dwellers, dorm dwellers, you know, you name it, house plants are really, you know, have become a bit of an obsession. Yes. And once you have them, you, you want to make more. And many of <laughs> right. those tropical house plants propagate vegetatively mm -hmm. and you don't need soil, you don't need containers other than a water vessel. Mm -hmm. So we call that water rooting and you can right. water root many types of tropical plants before you have to put them into a pot with soil. It's yeah. really cool. It's very cool. Yeah. And they can survive 
a long time in the water, but there's, sure. a, there's a downside to leaving them in for too long. Right. There, there are certain plants like pothos. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you can grow you can grow a pothos rooted in water and leave it there forever. But it's mm -hmm. good good to understand that there's a physiological difference between roots that develop underwater and mm -hmm. roots that develop in soil. Mm -hmm. So if you're water rooting, you have to know kind of that prime time if you want to pot it up. Right. When to do that? If you leave it too long, mm -hmm. sometimes those plants can have transplant shock when you go right. to soil after water or going too early before mm -hmm. those new roots have really branched out right. right so that they can take up oxygen from the soil you need to mm -hmm. wait till that happens to go into potting soil right right and knowing timing is everything yes. and, the, and the book is super helpful on that note and for people knowing when to step things right. up or to right. transplant them I'd like to spend a moment just talking about air layering because yeah there's <laughs> the first thing I saw in the book when I was just flipping through it was these images of kind of some new techniques or new tools right. for air layering, and I thought, that is cool. Yeah, air layering is in the vegetative propagation mm -hmm. section of the book, and it's probably the most advanced form of mm -hmm. propagation I cover in the book. But, you know, I, I'm into DIY recycling, you know, yeah. but I also love cool tools. Right. And, you know, air layering can be a little tricky for first timers, but there's mm -hmm. some great little pods that you can use that snap right onto the stem of the plant yeah. that, that help you see the roots as they're developing right. on that air layered cutting, which are which are really cool. So just for folks, to, you know, out there who don't yeah. know what air layering is, you can kind of peel back a little bit of bark. Yes. Moisten some sphagnum moss mm -hmm. or some other kind of yeah, medium. Core. I like to and, use core. And then, yeah. and then the, the way that I've ever done it was to wrap, I would wrap that with plastic, tape it right. up, right. and then roots would develop in the sphagnum moss, and you right. could then cut it. And, and then you snip it. it off and pot it up. Right. Right. So it's a great way <clears throat> to create a cutting on a plant before mm -hmm. you ever have to remove it from the main plant. But mm -hmm. the but the little balls help you see the roots as they come through. So that's kind of a new cool tool. Yeah, well, I, and the book is filled with, again, helpful little tips about the tools to yes. use. In fact, let's spend some okay. time. What, what do folks need to get started if they're really interested in this? Well, if you're doing water rooting, all you need is a, a, a vessel that holds water. <laughs> Literally, that's all you need. Right. Um, and even if you're starting seeds, you can often reuse a lot of containers you have in the house. And mm -hmm. I show you a lot of those in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, for seeds, you need a good, you know, quality seed starting mix. Mm -hmm. And you need light, okay, for, right. for seedlings. For vegetative cuttings, it comes down to, you know, again, having containers and, and a good quality medium, which right. I cover in the book. But if you want to get serious, there are also lots of really more advanced tools, mm -hmm. like automated propagators if if you are wanting to take cuttings that are a little trickier that right. take a little more babysitting time there's some some really interesting propagators that you can use to help you with that so right. it depends on what you're growing as to how advanced mm -hmm. the tools that you need are right. but I cover all the basic tools that you need to mm -hmm. to go from basic to a little bit more advanced. What about, you know, uh, things like root starters or yes. rooting hormones? Yes. Yeah, I cover rooting hormones and I get a lot of questions about rooting hormone. Mm. What is it? Yeah. Essentially, plants have a hormone inside them mm -hmm. that stimulates root growth. Right. And we people have figured out how to copy those mm -hmm. hormones. And so when you take a little vegetative cutting and mm -hmm. you dip it in that rooting hormone, it helps that cutting make roots faster. So it what? It roots before it rots, yeah. essentially, okay. right? So it, it speeds up the rooting mm -hmm. process and helps that cutting develop roots faster than it normally right. would. You don't always need it, but if you're taking slightly woodier cuttings or say citrus I think cuttings. Woody, woody is the answer, yeah, really. Yes, citrus, yeah. roses, slightly woody cuttings. Mm -hmm. I find that it actually helps people, especially less experienced propagators, be successful with those right. types of cuttings. You can find that in most nurseries. Yes, and there are organic options mm -hmm. as well, and then some other natural things that you can use to sort of keep a cleaner propagating mm -hmm. environment like honey and, and, and willow tea extract. Right. So, you know, they're not really rooting hormones, but they also help uh, keep the decay right. kind of at bay. We have just a brief amount sure. of time, but I want you to just talk about bulb division and root division, yeah. just real briefly. I include division at the end because yeah. it's not just for houseplants and seeds. Yeah. You can propagate from the plants in your garden and Absolutely. learning how to divide bulbs and perennials is just as important. Pass along plants, yeah. that's one of the real joys right. of plant propagation, it's giving right. the plants away. Right. And uh, that's one of the more common varieties or, or ways of doing that. Right, so I've got some cool tips for that in the okay. book too. Well again, this has been terrific. Another fantastic book. Thank you so much oh, for sharing so much all for that, your me. wisdom on this oh, stuff. Thank you. I hope people have a lot of fun with plant parenting. I know they yeah. will. Coming up next, it's Stephanie.